What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I know for those of us in the US we had uh, the 4th of July holiday. Hope everybody had a safe but fun uh, uh, time celebrating hopefully and enjoying ourselves. I know for us we didn't really have any fireworks shows or anything like that just because of you know everything going on in the world. We didn't really have that opportunity but uh, we still got to have a good time. We got to spend some time with some family which is always good. So uh, hopefully you did as well. Very, very happy to be back. I know we took a couple days off there, mostly just to enjoy the weekend and enjoy our time. So, uh, very, very fortunate, though, to get back here. We've, we're have we starting with Mono Green Stompy, uh, which has not changed a lot uh, from the new set. However, we have gotten a couple new cards, which I think are really, really worth noting, we will say. So, uh, the first one here is Scavenging Ooze. So, Scavenging Ooze is a really interesting card. It's a bit of a tech piece. Uh, it's a little bit like Gem Razor in that it's kind of really good at one thing. Uh, but I think it's a nice little built-in card. So first of all, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. Already perfectly fine. Uh, but it exiles cards from the graveyard, and if it was a creature card, you get a life and a 1-1 one, one counter on Scavenging Ooze. That means, essentially, this can take over a game, uh, and it can gain you life packs. So against the right deck, this is a really, really strong card. Uh, in general, I really, really like Scavenging Ooze. I was very excited when they said they were reprinting it, uh, and so I'm excited to try that here. Uh, the other creature uh, is Garrick's Harbinger. Uh, this is an interesting one. So it's a 4-3 for 3 with Hexproof from Black. Already kind of stupid good value, uh, but whenever it deals damage to a player or Planeswalker, you look at that many cards from the top of your deck. Uh, you reveal a creature or a Garrick Planeswalker card from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom. Uh, so the idea is this is hopefully going to help us draw more and more of our creature cards, which obviously we've got quite a number of. Uh, we've also got two Heroic Intervention. So this is a bit of a protection piece, but it's actually very, very good uh, because it affects every permanent we control, not just one. Uh, so essentially it's an instant two mana. Permanents you control gain Hexproof and are indestructible until the end of the turn. Uh, so they target something, you Heroic Intervention, all of a sudden everything has Hexproof and Indestructible. Makes it pretty good. Uh, so very, very strong cards here that we're getting to see from Core Set 2021. Uh, some interesting tech pieces. Again, Thrashing Brontodon is a little bit, I will say slightly different than uh, some of the other lists that we've seen. Uh, we've got a 2-2 two two split, 2 Gem Razor and 2 Thrashing Brontodon. Kind of an interesting one. Uh, I'm I'm not changing it because I think it'll be interesting to try this out, but uh, I tend to lean more towards Gem Razor just in general, but I get why this is this could be better. Uh, the, the Great Hinge is another one that, um, generally speaking, I have not played a lot with, but obviously a really, really good card. So it costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap it to add two green and you gain two life, so it's got a little bit of a life gain aspect to it. Uh, and then whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 1-1 counter on it, and you draw a card. So this is going to help us kind of keep going uh, the sooner we can get this down. So very, very strong. The rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. Uh, Pelt Collector and uh, Stone Coil Serpent here in the early game. Uh, Stone Coil obviously scales, so we could play that pretty much any time. Uh, Paradise Druid to help ramp us. Uh, we've kind of already talked about both three drops. We've got Questing Beast as a four of. Great threat for Planeswalkers, as well as just a really aggressive card. Uh, Vivian Arcbow Ranger, gonna hopefully distribute out some 1 1 counters and then deal with some of the opponent's creatures if need be. Uh, and then we've got Vivian Monster's Advocate, which is an Akoria card. Love, love uh, a Vivian Monster's Advocate. Super, super strong card. Uh, and then as far as the lands go, we've got 24. Pretty straightforward. 20 Forest and uh, 4 Castle Garenbrig, and that's it. Uh, so it's a really, really interesting deck. Uh, with some some new little tech pieces, and I'm I'm excited to try this one out. I have not played it yet, uh, but um, I've played quite a number in in just my my time on YouTube. I have played quite a number of uh, mono green stompy lists, and I think they're all really really strong right now. So I am excited to see how this one does. Um, I do have some stuff I want to talk about this episode though, uh, which is going to be interesting. So. Um, here's my thing. Uh, I know there has been a lot of, like, kind of crazy stuff going on in the internet world, uh, for the lack of, lack of better term. Um, we've had a lot of things come out about a lot of people that are 
not necessarily good. And I'm let me be very clear and say that I've heard and read a little bit, but it is not my place to go and say who has done what or anything like that. And so I will not. Um, that is not my place uh, at all. But I understand that there is a lot of stuff. Wow. <laughs> Lots of stone coil serpents. Let's just go ahead and play one. Uh, eh, actually, we won't. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, though. Um, and amidst everything else, uh, with COVID going around, with um, a lot of really interesting stuff, at least in the political world, uh, in, in our neck of the woods, for those of you not in the U.S., there's a lot of... A lot of reason to be, uh, we'll say, on edge and in a state of unrest, and that's not good. Uh, I certainly hate that for everyone, and I certainly hope that, you know, as a general rule, uh, we can do the best we can as a collective group to to avoid um, doing anything too too rash or too terrible. I think I th I think it's really really important that we all stay safe and stay you know, in our lane, so to speak. Um, and I, I say that very specifically because, uh, you know, I'm a pretty big advocate of like, you know, if you have an opinion on an issue, you should be able to share it. You should feel like, you know, it's okay for you to share it. Um, and I certainly do think that. Um, but uh, I'm saying this now to admit, well, that was a little weird. It just kind of like stuck. Um, I'm saying this now because, um, I do think that there's there's a limit to what you should be just like throwing out there um, as a as a youtuber it's very easy to say like yeah like you know we should be doing the XYZ and all that stuff and we also lose this game um, and that's fine and you know we have an audience for it and all that but I don't think it's right for a gaming YouTube channel in in my state um, to say like hey, I have this strong opinion about this thing and it matters so much and clearly I'm the person to, to listen to. And I don't think that that's fair. Um, I'm I'm not the person to listen to. Um, some other people are, so this isn't me like knocking other channels. Please, please understand that. Um, but, you know, I just want to mention that my goal and my thing that's really important is for everybody to stay safe and uh, to do what they feel is right within within the constraints of whatever they need to be constrained but that might be legal ramifications all that kind of stuff but just stay safe please um there is a lot of stuff going on in the world and i just really hope that um our community can be uh, uh not a beacon by any means that's so dramatic but like a uh I, I just hope that we can be a bit more positive than that and a, stay a bit more on top of things than that um we've got a great group of people in our community it is small um so don't make uh, this is not me being like we've got this giant community no we don't we have a small community but we've got a good one um and i just want to make sure that everybody in it uh and people outside of it as well do the best they can to stay safe and do what needs to happen so i hope that i hope that you guys are all staying safe and yeah that's that's about it i didn't really have a ton to say other than that but like I think given the state of everything going on right now, um, that's important stuff to say. So that's just how I feel about it. Again, I am not going to get into what all is going on because that's not really my place. Uh, we're a gaming YouTube channel. Uh, we're here to have fun and play some games. So I'm sorry if this was a bit long winded, but that's just the reality of it. So anyway, all that to say, we should probably be talking about the decks. So uh, mono green so far, we lost game one. Starting in on game two, and we're short on lands, which is not good. But uh, we did get, thankfully, Paradise Druid down helps us get to uh, at least our three drops. Hopefully, our four drops soon. Um, let's see. Let's attack in here. We do get to play this if we would like. Um, man. Okay. Uh, kind of leaving up the, the intervention here if need be, uh, but let's go ahead and play Garrick's Harbinger. Kind of expecting a, um, a counter spell here. Looks like Vance Flash. Yeah. Wow, Aether Gust. Um, I'm going to decline. Uh, we don't really need that. Uh, it was just kind of a decent three drop, but uh, I would like to hit lands more than anything. So unfortunately, we're just kind of in a, uh, uh, 
a uh, mana screwed position, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. That is super good. Um, questing Beast would be great to get down if we can do it. They're obviously going to get three in here, and that's fine. Oof, did not get there. Um, let's just go go ahead and play this out, and we will pass. Um, hopefully, we can get a land here. I would really like to get a land. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I really like Mono Green just as an archetype. Um, I think it got a couple really good tools, but I just don't know if it... My, my testing this deck right now is kind of seeing if it's... If it's held up because uh, we've got a lot of different decks that have come out now uh, as well and I think a lot of decks got upgrades and um, I do think that the the changes to this deck are an upgrade but um, are they enough to to hold true to the current standard metagame and I I, I don't know for sure so uh, that's kind of where we're at um, Again, if we can get a land and get Questing Beast down, that would be very, very helpful. We could also play uh, Vivian Arcbow Ranger, which is, you know, something. Um, just to be able to kind of fight through some of these guys, which is not terrible. Um, I'm going to say no blocks. It's a lot of damage, um, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, I don't have high hopes for this game, given that we're at two lands, but... You know, you gotta try. Um, so, out of curiosity, um, now that we've gotten all the the dramatic stuff out of the way, I just wanted to ask, um, did anybody have a fun time on the 4th? I know, again, that's a US thing, not really a, a general rule, but um, I just want to see if everybody had a good time, if anybody did anything exciting. Um, I hope, again, everybody stayed safe, but um, certainly not a reason we couldn't enjoy it. Wow, this is terrible. Um, this is really bad. Uh, we probably should have scavenging used, but I I don't think it's gonna matter. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody had a fun time, a safe time. We we like I said, so our our local town usually does a thing called Red, White, and Boom. I don't know what other places do, but it's just a nice little fireworks show in our downtown area, uh, and it's beautiful. It's it's usually a great time. Uh, my fiance and I went last year. We had a phenomenal time with another couple really really enjoyed it they had like a whole like like it's it was like uh carnival style games almost uh it was like you know you throw darts at balloons you do that kind of stuff we had a great time um and we were kind of looking forward to that again this year hoping that we would be able to go uh a few months ago but obviously given everything and large crowds of people that's not really a thing right now um and so uh they our city canceled it um and then to, to follow that up, a lot of other places around us uh, who, wow, okay, we're just conceding. This is like terribly unlucky. Um, a lot of places around us actually did the same. So I think like they're, they're like four or five. I mean, we're near Charlotte, North Carolina. We're across the border in South Carolina, but very, very near that. Uh, and a lot of the cities in this area like just said, no, we're not going to do it. Um, which I think is smart. I mean, let me just be clear. I think that's the right thing to do, but we, we need to stay safe. But um, they uh, they all kind of shut that down except like one. Um, and like, I know that they must have gotten flooded with tons and tons of people. I don't know how that show went or how that fireworks show went, but my assumption is it was it was a little packed, um, which I don't think is good. So I, I don't know. I um. We didn't really do too much. We we got to spend some time, like I said, with family, uh, which was great. Um, we had a phenomenal time uh, hanging out with some family and really, really enjoyed that. So that was pretty much it. We didn't do any fireworks stuff. We uh, we didn't get any of our own. Um, as fun as that is, uh, uh, we were just being safe and being easy this year. And so we didn't really worry about it. Um, and it worked out great for us. Uh, we, we had a phenomenal time. Let's go ahead and get Paradise Druid down here. It still procs this, which is important. Um, this attacking in is going to be a problem, uh, but we do get to hopefully kill the Scorch Spitter here if we're lucky. Um, I'm not going to block with the Paradise Druid uh, as much as possible because if we do draw a land, Questing Beast, not going to seal the game by any means, but it definitely helps. So, uh, definitely going to do that. I think they could have attacked uh, last turn with the Scorch Spitter if they wanted to, but kind of glad they didn't so that's a problem um looks like they're short on land though 
Uh, Vivian actually might be better. No, I guess we need to get this down first, because this is actually the thing we need to kill. Um, no blocks. The fact that that gets double strike is, like, kind of insane. Um, we could have double blocked, I guess, in hero... No, no, we couldn't have. Um, hmm. The scavenging ooze. Uh, do we attack? Do we attack? I'm going to say no. Just so, if they do have a shock, they've got to use it on two things uh, to, to not attack with the Scorch Spitter. Or to attack with the Scorch Spitter, excuse me. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we didn't really have much plans for the fourth. We just kind of laid, laid low, um, had some fun, drank a decent amount, but, you know, so to speak. It's, it's 4th of July, of course we're going to do that. Um, so we had a good time. It was hot here. Hot, hot here. Uh, and so we, we were outside a good bit, which was great. Uh, anytime we were, you know, with family or anything, we tried to stay outside, but it was a good time. It was a really fun time. Um, <clears throat> it's always fun just hanging out and hanging with family. Um, this is terrible. We probably die. We are not doing well. Uh, we're kind of getting unlucky with Lance, though, which is a little strange considering we have 24. I mean, it's the very average amount, so, like, you know, you wouldn't think that would be terrible. Um... We definitely need to kill Chandra. Um, that is such a problem. Um, we're going to do this. I know we're taking a big hit here, uh, and that's a problem. And we could just die next turn, but... Oh my goodness, how are we this unlucky? Um, that's a little insane to me. Uh, hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta kill it. Play this. They get to do two just by attacking. If they've got another Chandra, they just win. Ugh, this feels terrible. I can't believe we have not drawn more land. This is about as unlucky as I think I've ever seen um, in back-to-back -back games. Oh, well, yep. All right, well, we just lost all three. That's fine. Um, regardless, uh, I'm interested to see if we can we can pull out at least a win or two with this deck in the next video. I do think that, you know, mono green in general is pretty good. I think we got a little unlucky there, so I don't, I don't want to peg the deck with being like, hey, it's terrible right now. Uh, I don't think that that's fair. So we will give this another shot. Of course, we'll give it three more games. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and again, I hope everybody is staying safe. Please let me know. I, I know this is kind of a weird thing, but like if anybody just needs to like vent, send us an email. We'll, we'll respond, comment to us, do whatever you need to do. But we're, we're here as a community. We're going to hopefully get through this together. Uh, we've got a great group of people in our Discord. If you would like to talk with them, they are always there as well. Really, really awesome community. So thank you to everybody who's helped make that possible and who's who's here right now watching this video. Uh, it means a lot. So thanks, guys. Stay safe, and I will see you in video number two with this mono green stompy list.